Hey guys, Sam here. Today's video is going to be about barrel break-in as well as general cleaning of a long-range precision rifle. Okay, barrel break-in and barrel cleaning are two different things altogether. A barrel break-in is all about uh, laying over imperfections left in the bore after we chamber the barrel with a reamer. So it leaves little burrs up by the throat that we, uh, that we don't get out as a normal course of the machining process. So the first few shots that we send down the tube kind of lay those marks over in the direction that the, that the bullet's traveling. So when we do the break-in, we're trying to clean the copper left over from those marks scraping the bullet and then leaving copper throughout the barrel. Uh, barrel cleaning or rifle cleaning in general is all about maintenance. It's all about keeping the rifle working right and keeping it shooting well. So let's start out with barrel break-in. Uh, I think some of the best information I've seen on barrel break-in has come from barrel manufacturers. So when you buy a Krieger barrel like this, they're going to send you a piece of paper with it and it's going to tell you what they recommend as far as a barrel break-in procedure. Uh, another thing that I saw that was pretty interesting was a video that Long Range Shooters of Utah put together, I think it was last year at SHOT Show, where they interviewed John Krieger himself and talked to him about barrel break-in and cleaning and stuff like that. So the thing I took away from that, uh, the thing I remember the most, was when he was talking about why the copper that's in the barrel is left there and why it's left where it is when you do the break-in. So what he was saying is as you shoot the gun the first couple of times and you shoot that bullet over those uh, sharp edges left over from the reamer, it's scraping that, that copper and the flame and you know, all the pressure and the heat from the gunpowder burning behind that bullet is actually turning that copper into like a molten dust and it's basically shooting it down the length of the barrel and when it gets to the end of the barrel the bullet leaves the, the pressure all that stuff slows down the heat slows down and it leaves uh, copper residue along the, the front end of the barrel here now I don't have a bore scope so I just kinda have to look down inside there with a flashlight and from what I've seen that makes perfect sense so what we'll find when we do a barrel break in is that you'll get uh, copper pretty heavily up here in the throat section from where that uh, bullet first goes over those marks and then not so much in the middle section of the barrel and then a whole bunch of it down at the end and that's what I've seen but uh, anyway that's barrel break in and to make that work you have to fire you know uh, a minimal number of shots and then clean all the copper out of it and then fire another number of shots and clean all the copper out of it and it generally goes one shot clean one shot clean two or three shots clean another two or three shots clean or five shots clean and then theoretically we should be done with it so my history with barrel break-in has been varied I uh, sometimes I go all the way I keep cleaning until all the copper has gone in other words I'll clean all the way down to metal and eventually I'm gonna fire a shot I'm going to clean the barrel out and there isn't going to be any copper. It's all going to be powder residue. Uh, most of the time though, I don't get there and I don't care because the barrels seem to shoot just fine with a little bit of copper left in there. But uh, on this barrel, uh, I've been playing with it a little bit. I, I should have videoed this, but what I did when I first built the gun, chambered it, bedded it and all that stuff, I made sure all the chips and the machine oil and everything was scrubbed out of the barrel and then I just took it out back with a random load and fired a shot into a snowbank brought it in the shop, cleaned it all the way down to metal, and then took it back out and fired another shot into the snowbank, and then took it all the way down to metal again. And then the next sequence was three shots just to get a rough zero on the gun. So what I have now is one shot, one shot, three shots. So now what I'm working with is because I shot this gun yesterday, this was the first test grouping that I did, the first uh, you know, checking for my accuracy, and I fired a total of 12 shots. So the total of 12 shots, I'm going to clean it down today. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get all the powder out of it, all the powder residue, and then I'm going to use a copper solvent and start pushing patches through it with copper solvent on there to see how much copper is left over. Uh, it'll be interesting at least. As far as cleaning the barrel, there's kind of uh, two schools of thought. One is that you don't clean it until it has to be cleaned. In other words, it stops shooting well. And the other one says you need to clean it to keep it shooting well. Uh, I would say you'll do whatever you want to do with your barrel, but what I do is I don't clean it until I have to clean it. Other than uh, bore obstruction or dirt or snow or if I get enough water in there that it turns the carbon to mud, I don't clean the barrel. Uh, I've never had a problem with them not shooting well. And I've done a lot of testing where 
you know, I wouldn't normally be looking for things like that. How well is this shoot not being clean? But just over the course of testing other things, I've had to periodically shoot groups and test velocities, particularly with uh, testing the plus P cartridges, like 338 Edge plus P and 260 Terminator. And I'll tell you what, I didn't clean those barrels at all. The 338 Edge plus P, I think I cleaned it at 650 rounds so that I could be sure I was taking an accurate uh, throat measurement to see how much it burned forward. So 650 rounds I shot that barrel and I have so many groups that are under 0.2 with that barrel, it's not even funny. So, you know, that was an eye opener for me because before then I cleaned my barrels pretty uh, regularly, 200 rounds, 300 rounds, whatever, and I cleaned them really well and I, you know, I worried about it and all that stuff. But when I started shooting that rifle, Number one, I didn't have time. I was just shooting it literally all the time. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to try not cleaning this barrel and see what happens. That barrel shot awesome. So once I got through that and learned that, I pretty much started treating all my barrels exactly like that. If I didn't get dirt or some kind of crap down in the barrel from hunting, I didn't clean it. Uh, I've had some really good barrels since then that shot well too. Uh, 260 Terminator is another one I could talk about. 800 or 900 rounds through it on the first barrel before I ever thought about cleaning it. So uh, it's up to you. If it makes you feel better to clean your barrel, then have at her. I think if you're going to do that, then you should just be careful on how you clean it so that you don't break anything or hurt anything in the course of running a rod down the tube or anything like that. But if the barrel's shooting well, what are you trying to accomplish by cleaning it? This is a stainless steel barrel. It's on a field gun. The, a typical precision rifle barrel isn't going to last over a year anyway and you know the whole it's wet and it's going to corrode or the gunpowder is going to corrode it or the primer is going to corrode it it's a bunch of bunk it won't it'll shoot everything will work just fine so like I always tell everybody try it for yourself don't believe anything that I tell you or anybody else tells you just try it for yourself and I think you'll find that a lot of the guys that are cleaning their barrels religiously after a certain number of rounds haven't tried it any other way so anyway, that's my take on barrel cleaning, but I'll go ahead and demonstrate how I clean the barrel when I actually do it. A bolt action rifle is a pretty robust uh, mechanism. It has a lot of camming uh, leverage that we have on the bolt to close it and make the, the round go in the chamber and everything. So it's, uh, you know, it's very nature, kind of makes it low maintenance. Now having said that, I keep the chamber as clean as I can, as often as I can. I keep the bolt lug recesses cleaned out and most of that is just to make it function as easy as possible. Uh, I've only had a couple of stoppages ever, and they were both because something got in there while I was shooting. Uh, one of them was a blade of grass on my 338 Edge, my Canyon rifle. Somehow a little piece of grass got in between the, the back of the bolt lug and the recess there, and I couldn't close it all the way. Uh, the other time was a, a camera, it was a chunk of Cerakote, or a chunk of something got off of uh, a bolt, and got into the same spot. And both times it was no big deal. I ended up getting my pinky in there and I could feel it and I just pulled it out and everything worked again. It wouldn't have mattered how clean I had everything. Those things would have stopped the gun from working. But having said that, this is a pretty reliable mechanism overall. We're not talking about, you know, an M4 gas gun where it's going to fill up with a bunch of junk from firing it and you have to keep it clean to keep it uh, functioning or like a 1911 with close tolerances, or a SIG handgun. Uh, this is kind of like the Glock of rifles here. I mean, the bolt action just runs. But I still keep it as clean as I can, as regularly as I can. All right, let's talk about uh, tools and chemicals. Uh, gun cleaning stuff is worse than car stuff. There are so many different chemicals on the market, and they all kind of work. So uh, pick one that you like and run with it. Uh, I've tried a bunch of them over the years and I've, I've pretty much just settled on Shooter's Choice as my bore solvent. Now here's Frankie. Frankie likes Shooter's Choice too. Uh, but anyway, Shooter's Choice is just a general bore solvent that cleans powder and, and, and to a small degree it'll also clean copper out of the bore. Now for, for straight on doing nothing but cleaning copper out, I like Sweets. Sweet 762 solvent. Uh, this stuff's pretty nasty. Do not use this inside a small room unless you're planning on ventilating it very well right afterwards. And get the patches out of your house if you're in the house when you're done. Get those patches out of your house before your wife figured out that you did that in the house. This stuff is stout. 
and really stinks. So I like to do this outside as much as possible. But Shooter's Choice isn't too bad. Hoppies, old number seven, it's pretty much the same stuff as Shooter's Choice. They both work very well. But uh, anyway, these are the only two chemicals I use. I put Shooter's Choice in this little squirt bottle to make it easy to put it on patches. As far as tools go, this is a bore guide. You really need to use a bore guide. And the whole job of the bore guide is to go inside the, the chamber. This nose will go inside the chamber there. And this end is the same diameter as the bolt or close to it. So it's supported back here. And as I push the cleaning rod through, the cleaning rod can't you know tilt up and down or go left and right. It has to pretty much just follow this line and come out the other side. But uh, the other thing this will do is it'll seal off, kind of seal off the chamber and keep uh, at least a large amount of solvent getting down inside all this stuff so you have to clean it out later. Anyway, pick a bore guide. It's the same deal. There's a bunch of them on the market. I think this one is a stony point. I have them in a couple different sizes and I've just been using them for years and I haven't seen any reason to change. Okay, some of the other tools are just a, this is just a brass uh, rod that holds a, a patch loop on the end of it, just another brass patch loop. And this is what I use to clean my chamber out. Just put a couple of these big uh, uh, patches inside that to run through there and I just run up in there and clean the chamber out. You can do that with solvent, you can do it without solvent, whatever it takes to get the job done. Another tool that I think is really handy is this little bore lug recess tool. This is a fancy one, this, was, uh, this is a Dewey and it's all brass and then down here on the end it has a little uh, Allen screw that holds a felt swab in this slot and when you push that up inside there into the bolt lug recess you just spin it and it cleans all the junk out and you can push it forward to put action or put uh, pressure on the front or you can pull it back to put pressure on the back of it but that tool works like a champ I love it alright my favorite cleaning rods are these uh, Dewey coated rods uh, this one I believe is a 40 incher no this is a 44 inch cleaning rod and it's a 22 so the whole number is uh, 22 C 44 so basically what that means is the diameter of this will go into a, a, a 223 center fire caliber barrel and uh, anything if you go up the next size I believe it's uh, 277 or maybe 30 so obviously neither one of those will go into my 6.5 so for 7 millimeter and down I use this 22 C size and then for 30 for 308 and up I use a 30 rod but anyway great rod if you take care of it and don't get a bunch of junk embedded in this coating you can't hurt your barrel with it uh, the tips on them are are brass so you can't really hurt your barrel with that either if you touch the rifling or something with it uh, I use just a regular pierce style jag so it's a it's just a jag with a sharp tip on the end and you just put the patch on it punk and it punctures the patch and it sits right here on top and when we run it through the barrel and then pull it back the patch will be laying on the other end of the barrel uh, they also make a wrap style jag where you wrap it and it has like a serration or a, a knurling that'll hold the patch in place it's another way to do it I just really like these uh, pierce jags they just work well and they're easy okay so another thing and I, I know this is helpful to people because I've spent some some time trying to find out what all these sizes are uh, first we'll start with stupid easy stuff I keep q-tips on my bench this is a long one uh, with a, a, a pretty firm tip on it you know it won't come apart easily but these long wooden handle ones they they have a little bit extra reach if I need to get in somewhere I can break them in half and use both ends separately I can break it in half and use the the wood to scrape a crevice out inside the action or whatever and I also keep just regular old q-tips that you use for cleaning your ears out and they're handy to get inside the receiver and clean out stuff. Uh, as far as patches go, the ones that I use with that Pierce style jag mostly are the number two rounds from Brownells. And they're an inch, a inch and a quarter diameter and they work very well uh, for putting solvent on them and running through a 6.5 bore. It works perfectly. And then when I move up to a 30, a 308 rod, like in my 300 wind mag, with a 308 jag, the same patches will work. They, they put just enough patch around that jag to make it a little bit tight but not so tight that you can't get any solvent in the bore. Now when I go and scrub the bore out for the final time or when I'm trying to put some uh, pressure on it to help 
uh, push the copper out or push cop or uh, carbon, I'll use the bigger patches. These are number threes. They're one and three quarters of an inch diameter, and it's the same process either with a 22 uh, rod and a 65 jag through a 260 or a 308 with the the 30 rod through a 300 wind mag or whatever. They all kind of work the same way. Now to clean out the chamber, I think these are just uh, three inch square patches and you can use just about anything here but two of these in a patch loop together will clean out just about every chamber that I work on so that's another good thing to have around. Now as far as brushes here's where a lot of guys differ in their opinion. A lot of guys won't use anything but nylon brushes. I don't like the nylon brushes. I tried them I don't think they work as well as these uh, bronze brushes. Now these go on to the, uh, the male threads on the end of a dewy jag or dewy rod so they're, they're female threaded here just to go on the end of that rod. I will tell you that you can't use these when you're using sweets because the sweets will just eat these up. You know, it's a, it dissolves copper so you can't use it on these. Uh, what I usually do is I use these if I need to clean a lot of carbon out and I want to do it quickly. I'll run a brush through there a few times and then I'll run patches afterwards and I'll demonstrate that. But before you, uh, you know, basically don't squirt sweets onto one of these jag or one of, onto one of these brushes it'll just eat it up and if you leave any of this in the bore after you clean out with your other solvent and then run sweets through it again you will have false positives on your patches because all these little you know the little bristles and everything little the little tiny pieces of copper in there and uh, what you'll think is copper isn't really copper it's just crap left over from these brushes so Use these sparingly and clean them out all the way afterwards if you're going to do any kind of uh, uh, copper cleaning to see, you know, or copper testing to see if you have any copper in your bore. I don't think there's any right way or wrong way to do this, but there are definitely ways that you can hurt your barrel. Uh, but I'll just show you how I go through cleaning the rifle. Uh, the first thing we obviously do is we make sure the gun's unloaded, drop the magazine out of it, remove the bolt. Uh, in this case, I'm going to have to drop my cheek piece because I need to be able to get a cleaning rod on there. Here's a pro tip, I don't know if you guys can see it or not, but I have a line drawn with Sharpie here on my stock, and so when I'm done I can just raise up my cheek piece to that line and it's exactly where I need it. Very handy. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to run this patch loop with a couple of those uh, nice clean patches on it and just kind of swipe out the chamber. I'm not going to use any solvent on this, I'm just going to swipe it a little bit. And that's about it, over 12 shots doesn't get real dirty. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put my bore guide in. So the bore guide goes in place of the bolt and it sits inside the chamber a little bit and then it has an adjustment. You can move it back and forth. So I adjust mine so that they cam just a little bit uh, just like a bolt would when you close them. So now that uh, cleaning rod is in place of the bore or in, in place of the bolt so everything will be fed right through there. Alright, the very first thing I'm going to do is run just a regular one of those smaller patches through the bore with shooter's choice on it. And what this will do is it'll get some solvent into the bore and it'll uh, you know hopefully take off a little bit of that first layer of carbon and powder residue. So I'll just put some drops shooter's choice on that patch and it's stuck to the end of the the cleaning rod by that pierce jag loop or pierce jag. I'm just going to run in the bore guide I'm going to hit the throat and then I'm just going to give a nice little push and I'm just going to let this one go all the way through and then when I pull the rod back the patch falls off and lands onto that piece of uh, paper towel I put under the muzzle. And I just pour, pull the rod back and then you can use this paper towel to wipe that off. So let's take a peek at that first patch and all this was was a patch that I I ran through with solvent on it. So you can see there's quite a bit of carbon on there and we need to get all of that off before we can figure out if we have any copper in the barrel because the copper is going to be under that carbon. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the jag off and I'm going to put the bronze bore brush on. Now you can remove all of this with just uh, a jag and brushes and chemicals, but it'll take you forever. So I like to use a brush if I'm firing a bunch of rounds and I need to get in there and see if I have copper and with these they're kind of expendable and disposable to me so I'm just going to put some Shooter's Choice right on that brush. And 
and let it exit the muzzle end. Don't try to pull it back out before it exits. It, uh, it doesn't want to bend that way, so I'm going to pull it back through. Now a lot of guys like to take the brush off down there so they don't pull it back over the muzzle. I've never had a problem pulling them over the crown, so I just keep going back and forth, come out the other side, smoothly pull it back, push it through again, come back, and probably do this eight or ten times. All right, so that really got our solvent mixed in with the carbon and the lands and the rifling and everything down the grooves. And you can see that there's a bunch of carbon fouling or powder residue that's inside the barrel. So we need to get all that out of the way. So the next thing I'll do is let the chemical do what it's supposed to do. I'll take this brush off. Make your brushes last a little bit longer. You can squirt them with brake clean after you pull them out of there and dry them off with an air hose or whatever. Keep the solvent from working on them over at least a long period of time. So we'll run another small patch through. And this time, I'm going to kind of rub the rifling with it. Stroke it back and forth. You watch that muzzle end down there, you can see some of that solvent getting squirted out the end. Alright, so now I'm going to let that sit in there for a little bit. Alright, so let's push one of the bigger patches through, a little bit tighter, and see what it looks like. And I'm not going to put anything at all on this, I'm just going to run it through dry. see, I'll just grab that, that that barrel is just not very dirty at all. Okay, so I think I've gotten as much uh, powder fouling as I'm going to get out of the barrel. So now I'm going to run a patch, a smaller patch, that's wet with sweets copper solvent and we'll see how much blue we get. So this reacts with copper. Uh, copper turns it blue. So typically when there's a bunch of copper in there you'll have uh, really bright blue streaks. But we'll get it wet and we'll let the chemical work on it. Man this stuff's nasty. Woo! The best way to use this is to kind of scrub it back and forth kind of foam it up I guess is for lack of a better description. Now I'm going to focus on the throat area and then I'm going to come out towards the muzzle end. And when I do the muzzle end, I just want to make sure that I don't come all the way out. I just want to keep it right in that end. So you can mark your cleaning rod or you can just kind of look at uh, the end of it and see where it's at when the tip is just starting to come out of the muzzle there. And then the same thing with the other patch. I'm just going to run it out and then it'll just fall off the end. Just like that. Alright, so this next patch is going to be one of the bigger ones, a little bit tighter fitting that I also put sweets on. Same kind of deal, I'm going to rub it back and forth, try to put as much of that chemical where it belongs, where it can do some, some work. And then again, I'm just going to come to the end of the barrel there, try not to push out. What I'm looking for here is copper. I want to know if there's any copper, meaning is do I have those machine marks and the barrel pushed over now, and can I stop worrying about it, or do I need to keep doing it? So this will tell us. It 
just like everything else, uh, follow directions that come with these chemicals for best results. And I believe I'm not supposed to let that sit in there for any more than 15 minutes and don't mix it with other chemicals. Seems like good policy. You can see there's just a little bit of blue there on the back end where it was up against the jag. And because the jag is uh, made out of the same kind of stuff, you know, on occasion I'll get junk on it like that. But in the direction that I'm pushing it through, so there's where it came out the the muzzle end. There's just nothing. There's no there's no streaks on the patch. Nothing. So let's run a clean white patch through it and see if we have any blue on it at all. Oh, guys, what do you think? I think I'm done barrel break-in now. I think I'm just done with it. Second clean patch. No blue streaks at all. Okay, a couple of final things I did there that I didn't show on video is that I cleaned the chamber out, made sure there's no copper or uh, copper solvent or shooter's choice left over in the chamber. So I just swabbed it out with a clean patch and then I cleaned the bolt, re bolt lug recess with that tool I showed you with the felt thing. And then I ran one clean patch through the barrel just to make sure. And then I put my brake back on, adjusted my cheek piece up, now I'm ready to shoot the gun. Uh, little dab of grease on the back of the bolt lugs just to make sure nothing galls there. Other than that, I don't put any lubrication at all on the bolt gun. Now, I would say that uh, now that I'm done with the, the whole break-in procedure, meaning I got no copper out of it this time, that that tells me that those burrs, those machining marks left over from chambering the, the barrel are either laid over, they're gone all together, or whatever. And, and basically, they don't matter anymore. I'm not even going to think about them. It's out of my mind. Uh, so now I can put some rounds down the tube and not clean the barrel so that I get a nice, even, uh, consistent velocity. Now it's been my experience that if you start with a clean barrel that's cleaned all the way down to metal, so there's no copper, there's no powder fouling in it whatsoever, your velocity will be quite a bit lower than what you're going to get after you get 10 to 20 rounds down the tube. So uh, now that I've, I've, I'm done cleaning it, I don't have to clean it anymore unless it stops shooting for whatever reason. Now I can start putting rounds down the tube and doing some velocity checking, say 20 or 30 rounds from now. Uh, anyway, don't be afraid to try new things. Uh, don't think you have to clean your gun just because everybody says you have to clean your gun. I can tell you from a lot of experience and from uh, experience of other guys that I know, you don't have to clean your gun. Uh, that means you don't have to clean the barrel. Now I would still clean the action in the receiver just as a maintenance procedure, clean your optics and your trigger mechanism and all that kind of junk. But as far as running a patch down the tube, I don't think you have to do it. But anyway, I'm not afraid of you guys beating me up on the comments. It doesn't bother me at all. Thanks for watching the video. We'll see you in the next one.